Good morning. Welcome to our spring 2018 baccalaureate commencement celebration. At this time, the presentation of the colors will be conducted by the Jacksonville University Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps. We ask those who are standing to remain standing. Please stand if you're sitting and join us in the national anthem. Please parade the colors. Please join the Jacksonville University River Tones in the singing of our national anthem. Please post the colors. Everyone, please be seated. Well, that's how to start the morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Koss, JU class of 1981. On behalf of the entire Jacksonville University family, it's my distinct honor to welcome all of you to campus today. What an exciting day. What a beautiful morning to make history here. Thank you to the River Tones, the Jacksonville University River Tones, all students here, our newest ensemble in the Division of Music, headed up by Professor Dina Barone. Can we give them a hand for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem? We'd also like to thank our Jacksonville University Brass Quintet for the beautiful prelude and the opening music today. You can find each of our student musicians, their names, the year of graduation in your program on page two, so please look them up. Tremendous talent here in the College of Fine Arts. Thank you to our veteran bagpiper who let us in today, Mr. Michael Thomas, Jacksonville University class of 1996. 
<laughs> and a special appreciation to our senior mace carrier who led us in this morning, Dr. S. Walker Blanton, who arrived here in 1968. Doc, congratulations, 50 years. To offer our invocation now, we invite to the podium our outstanding young alum, class of 2010, Ms. Audrey Moran. Audrey is a great friend of the university, having spent time here in leadership of Alpha Delta Pi sorority, as well as as a student athlete. She's also helped energize our young JU alums through the Alumni Board of Governors and the graduates of the last decade, our Gold Society. Audrey? Thank you, President Cost. It is an honor to be back at my alma mater to celebrate with our graduates, faculty, and esteemed guests. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering so many family and friends together in joy and gratitude on this beautiful morning to honor the many accomplishments of the class of 2018. As their names are called to receive their degrees and honors, may our graduates also remember those who have supported them along this wonderful journey. May this celebration remind our graduates, faculty, staff, and guests that hard work, creativity, and sacrifice can make a positive impact far beyond one individual. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Audrey. Ladies and gentlemen, on this special day and on these special grounds where we've been graduating for decades, Allow me to draw your attention to the flags directly behind us here. These represent the 18 countries of our graduating class today, including the United States and everything from Brazil to Venezuela. Over the course of our 84 years as an institution, we've graduated students from all 50 states and more than 100 foreign countries around the world. And just as important as the places that these students have come from, we believe it's more important to the places they're going to go. At this very minute, JU alums are living and thriving and creating and succeeding in hundreds of locations, thousands of places all around the world. So it's a testament to the depth and the caliber of our graduate and undergraduate classes that for the first time this year, we hold both a baccalaureate undergraduate ceremony this morning and a graduate ceremony just two nights ago. We had a spirited event here two nights ago and we're looking forward to a wonderful two hours with you this morning. Today we award bachelor's degrees to 651 students who are talented, hardworking, and prepared to succeed in life. We also have three exemplary students who are being awarded both a bachelor's and a master's degree today. This is the 12th commencement ceremony I've had the pleasure to preside over as an alum of this university. And each year it's one of the proudest days in this university's life and in mine personally. Every single student walking across this stage today is gonna to join the group of more than 32,000 Jacksonville University graduates who graduated from this university dating all the way back to the 1930s. So we welcome all of you, class of 2018, to the family. And we also welcome today our distinguished keynote speaker, Dr. Arthur C. Brooks, in town from Washington, D.C. He's president of the American Enterprise Institute and a visionary leader in economic policy, social and cultural trends, analysis, applied scholarship, and you're gonna hear quite a bit more from him in just a moment. We're fortunate to have a beautiful morning here, but the temperatures will climb, so I will keep my remarks brief. Here they come, two minutes. To our graduates, I offer my warmest congratulations. You are a tenacious, passionate, and fearless group. I'm pleased to count many of you as friends and colleagues we have each other's cell phone numbers. You have demonstrated remarkable work ethic, creativity, and energy. We've challenged you to do better, and you've answered that at every turn. You're the reason many of us believe our global future is so bright. And I will pay you the highest compliment one alum can to another. You've come here and you've made your university better than it was when you arrived several years ago. To the thousands of family and friends that are gathered here this morning, thank you for all you've done to make this day possible. We know you've sacrificed a great deal to help your student get here where they are today, and we're grateful to you. This celebration is your celebration as well. To our dedicated faculty who've shown up in such large numbers this morning, 
My thanks for your scholarship, for your leadership, and for your partnership in building a truly great university. And to our staff at all levels, thank you for the work you do to continue to move us forward. It is a great time to be a Jacksonville University Dolphin, and we're glad to have you all as members of the family. In particular, I'd like to welcome the alums who are here from all around the world who've come in days ago and are staying through the weekend, thanks to all of you. I'd like to say hello and a great thank you to the members of the President's Parents Council up here to your left, who've been great supporters of this university and all the time their sons and daughters have been here. Congratulations. To our Aspire sponsors, to our donors, to those who've helped create scholarships for these students, thank you for being here and thank you to our faculty marshals. Now I'd like to recognize those on the platform briefly before we hear our commencement speaker. I'd like to recognize members of our Board of Trustees celebrating commencement with us today, if they would stand briefly as they're announced. Their trustee and JU alumna, Cynthia Chomiak, trustee Ray Driver, trustee Roseanne Duran, trustee JU alum and judge Gary Flower, trustee and alum Matt Kane, trustee Lee Nimnick, Trustee George Scanlon, Trustee Jamie Shelton, and Trustee Chuck Woodhouse. I thank all of them for their leadership and service. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an outstanding board. Your university is in very good hands. Please join me in thanking them for attending today. Now it's my privilege to introduce you to your senior management and leadership team of this university. If they would please stand as they're announced. Provost Dr. Donnie Horner. Associate Provost, Dr. Bill Crosby. Associate Provost, Dr. Leanne Clemens. Dean of Students, Dr. Christy Gover. Senior Vice President and for Communications and Enrollment and proud JU alum, class of 86, Ms. Margaret Dees. Chief Financial Officer, Randy Freeborn. Dean of the Brooks Rehabilitation College of Healthcare Sciences, who will become Acting Provost of this university next week, Dr. Christine Sapienza. Dean of the Davis College of Business, Dr. Don Kapner. Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Sandra Coyle. Dean of the College of Fine Arts, Dr. Henry Rinney. Director of Athletics, Mr. Alex Ricker Gilbert. Executive Director of a Marine Science Research Institute, Dr. Quinton White. Director of our Public Policy Institute, Mr. Rick Mullaney. Commanding Officer of our NROTC program and proud JU alum, class of 1996, Captain Glenn Leverett, Chief Admissions Officer Tom Taggart, Professor and Chair of English, Division of Humanities and our 2018-19 Professor of the Year, Dr. Julie Brannan, Faculty and Residents, Dr. Ramesh Ajikari, Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer, voted one of the top 50 players in the history of basketball, a proud 1971 JU alum, Mr. Artis Gilmore, Chair of the Faculty Assembly, Dr. Mary Gibson. Directing our ceremonies out on the grounds today, Director of the Office of the President, JU alum, Class of 2011, Diana Donovan. Handling operations out there today as well, two recent grads, our Presidential Fellows, Mr. Jack Burns and Luke Myrie. And finally, congratulations to our newly announced 2018-19 Presidential Fellows, both graduating this morning, Ms. Mackenzie Bolin and Mr. Mitch Gallo. Thank you all for being with us today. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce a friend, today's keynote speaker, a true visionary in the economic and public policy arena for the past decade, a, a man with an extraordinary global reach and a really unique personal story. A few words of introduction before we bring him forward. He's the Beth and Ravenel Curry Scholar in Free Enterprise at American Enterprise Institute. He's the president of the American Enterprise Institute, the oldest think tank in the world. Before joining AEI, he was the Louis A. Bansell Professor of Business and Government at Syracuse University, where he taught economics and social entrepreneurship. Before pursuing his work in academia and public policy, he was a musician, classically trained French horn in Barcelona, Spain. He's a contributing opinion writer for the New York Times, for the Wall Street Journal. He's the best-selling author of 11 books and a textbook on the role of government, economic opportunity, happiness, and the morality of free enterprise. His latest book is a New York Times bestseller talking about a happier and more prosperous America. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium a dynamic leader and visionary, Dr. Arthur Brooks.
Dr. Brooks, in recognition of your substantial contributions in civic and business life, we have a resolution we would like to share in part. It reads, whereas Arthur C. Brooks, renowned professor, author, speaker, columnist, and policy expert, established his career as a classical musician, whereas while earning his PhD in public policy at the Rand Graduate School in Santa Monica, California, Dr. Brooks also worked for the Rand Corporation on combat models for the U.S. Air Force, and then spent 10 years as a professor of public administration. And whereas Dr. Brooks delivers more than 150 speeches each year in U.S., Europe, and Asia, and also appears regularly on radio, television, and across all media. And whereas Dr. Brooks frequently contributes to the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Commentary Magazine, and other in in publications, and is an influential world voice in the areas of social science, policy, the fine arts, and higher education. And whereas Jacksonville University is honored to host Dr. Brooks today, be it resolved that this resolution be presented to Arthur C. Brooks on the 28th day of April 2018 as part of the permanent record of the university and as a lasting tribute to the contributions of Arthur C. Brooks. Now, therefore, finally, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of Jacksonville University does hereby confer upon Arthur C. Brooks the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters presented this 28th day of April, 2018. To the class of 2018, to our gathered visitors and guests today, please join me in congratulating a gentleman who two days ago was meeting with Parliament in London, yesterday was in Washington, our nation's capital, and today is here with you, your keynote commencement speaker, Dr. Arthur C. Brooks. I feel short. <laughs> the short guy putting that hood on me was six foot six, by the way. What an honor it is to be with you. Thank you to these gentlemen for, for this. Thank you for this honor to, to President Cost, to the trustees of this fine university, to the faculty, to the staff, to the parents, to the guests, and most of all, to you, the graduates. What an honor it is for me to join you today tied to this great university. The question that you'll get today and, and going forward is, what are you going to do now? You just finished college, you're ready to go out in the world, what do you want to do now? I remember this question. My father asked me that question when I was 22 years old. What do you want to do now? And I said, I remember, I want to be happy. And he looked at me and he said, what makes you so special? <clears throat> You know, the truth is, that's what you want. That's what we all want. The point of coming to this great university to prepare yourself for the world isn't just to make money. It isn't just to be successful in material uh, terms. It's to build your life in a way that serves others and can make you happy. Today, I write books about happiness. <laughs> and I want to take my 15 minutes in your life to give you a couple of ideas on how to find it and tell you what I wish I had known when I was 22 years old. I'm gonna give you two pieces of advice. The truth is you get two pieces of advice every day right now. Number one is to make prudent choices and don't take crazy risks. The second piece of advice is to find your strengths and to rely on them. What I'm gonna tell you right now is that that's bad advice. I'm gonna tell you to do just the opposite. Lesson number one for you to use the rest of your life to be the happiest person possible. Take more risk. You know, that, that's not what you typically hear. That sounds wrong. Here's what I want you to understand. Now, as a researcher, as a social scientist, there's a study that I recently saw that captured my imagination. It was by a, a great economist who teaches at the University of Chicago. Uh, his, his name is Stephen Levitt. If you've ever heard the name, it's because he wrote a big best-selling book called Freakonomics. 
And his new study asks this question, how do people make the hardest decisions in their lives? How do they, they fix it when they, when they don't know what to do? Now, if I look at my data right, a third of you are struggling with a major decision. It's not bad, maybe it's two good possibilities. Do I do this or this? Where yes is scary, and no is to do what you've always been doing. Now, 75% of the time, people say no to hard decisions. Why? Because usually they don't make the decisions and time runs out. Should you say yes more or no more when you have a major decision? Maybe it's about going to graduate school. Maybe it's about uh, a relationship. Maybe it's about something having to do with a job. Do we say yes too much or no too much? This is what this economist was trying to figure out. So he, he put together a major research study and he asked people all over the country to let him make the biggest decisions in their lives with the flip of a coin. Now this is crazy, isn't it? 22,000 people signed up for his. They were in such pain about making a decision that 22,000 people said, I'm gonna let an economics professor make the biggest decision in my life with a flip of a coin. Well, here's the twist in this. Half the people got, yes, do whatever it is that's on your mind, the scary thing. Half said, no, you got tails. Stay with what you've got. And then he went back a year later to see who was happier, the yeses or the noes. Now, the way that you measure happiness is that one is misery and 10 is bliss. What's your number? Everybody's got a number. It's pretty constant throughout your life, as a matter of fact. And so he, he, he asked before the experiment, and then a year after they assigned the yeses and noes, he asked again. And what did he find? The yeses were one entire digit happier than the noes. This is a big finding. 75% of the time, people say no to the big, scary decisions in their life, but you should say yes. Now, this is news that you can use because this is you. This is you going forward. And, and I'm not, by the way, thinking I'm urging you to take a lot of risk to start a business, to reach for the stars professionally. That's good, do that. Here's what I'm really talking about. I'm asking you to take a risk with your, with your heart and the relationships that you have with other people. See, here's the world tells you in 2018. Hold yourself apart. Don't get married too young. Don't tie yourself down. Keep your options open. That, my friends, is not good advice. <laughs> what you need to do is to take the risk with the love that is the most important thing in your life. You know, I work in Washington, D.C. I have an, an institution that's full of hundreds of young people, people under 30. And I get to know them really well. And, and I have to tell you that Washington, D.C. is the world's most dysfunctional dating market. It's terrible. And so I'll meet these young guys, 28, 29 years old, and, and, and they'll, they'll be telling, I'll say, how are things going? And they'll say, fine. I say, are you still dating that girl? And they'll say, yeah. I'll say, how long have you been going out? And they'll say, you know, eight years. <laughs> and then they'll ask me, what do you think I ought to do? And I got the data. <laughs> I say, I think you should go back to your apartment and put on the music for a little while, get your courage up then I think you should go over to her place, say yes to your heart, and get down on one knee, and hope she says yes to you. Now, there's something like that in your life, and if it's not right now, it's gonna come soon. When it comes to love, when it comes to your heart, say yes, even if it's scary. Take more risk. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two, you always hear that, that uh, you should Play to your strengths. That's what you've been doing in college, by the way. You've been uh, majoring in something that, is, uh, that you're good at, that you like, that you're passionate about. Thank you. My, my hood was errant. <clears throat> Do what you're good at. Play to your strengths. Your mother taught you that. Your professors taught you that. I want to give you different advice. Each of you has a weakness. Each of you is embarrassed about something. Each of you is really bad at something. You need that. Why? Because the greatest strength that you have is connecting to other people, and you can't connect to other people with your strengths. You can only connect to other people with your weaknesses. I want you to think about it, and I want you to use it going forward. See, you're privileged as of today. You're college graduates from this great institution. You can't relate to other people when you say about your wonderful college degree and your high-paying job. 
You can only relate to other people with your weaknesses. Let me tell you about how a happy life requires weaknesses. A happy life requires connections with other people, friends, neighbors, people who will lead you. Every major religion understands that you connect to other people with the things about which you're embarrassed. Hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. That's what St. Paul said. Is that just rhetoric? I never quite believed this. But then I learned. So it's not good enough for me to tell you to use your weakness. Let me tell you how I use mine. It is incredible to me that I stand up in, at this great university and give a commencement address. I do not have a strong academic background. You know, when I was 19 years old, I dropped out of college. Dropped out, kicked out, splitting hairs. <clears throat> and I had to make a living. So when I went on the road knowing the one thing I knew how to do, I was a musician. I played classical music, barely making my rent, traveling around. I played jazz with a guitar player named Charlie Bird for a couple of years, and then I wound up in the Barcelona Symphony Orchestra. I went there because, not because of the job, I went there because I met a girl who lived in Barcelona. I was chasing her there, and I wanted to try to convince her to marry me. Hmm. That was lesson one, if you remember. Hmm. When I was in Barcelona, I was 28 years old, you know what was bugging me? It was not that I didn't have a college degree, but that I had dropped out and failed. That bothered me. I got nothing against not going to college. There's nothing wrong with not going to college. But for me, the fact that I had failed just gnawed at me. So I said, maybe I can try again. Problem, I didn't have any money and I didn't really live any place. So I asked one of my friends who said, you should go to correspondence school. What's that? You get your degree through the mail. You can fax your assignments in, and this is the 90s. You can fax your assignment in. <laughs> And so I did a little bit of research and I found a wonderful institution in Trenton, New Jersey called Thomas Edison State College, which was a, an institution of higher learning dedicated to, to adults who needed a second chance. Correspondence was just one of the ways that you could do your degree, but I was living in Spain. So I signed up for correspondence courses and I gotta tell you, I loved it. I killed it in correspondence school. I got straight A's. I became an economics student, and I gotta tell you, it completely captured my imagination. I had never had a better experience. So I was graduating. I graduated a month before my 30th birthday. You know what my commencement was? It was putting on my slippers and walking out to my mailbox and getting my degree. And I got back in, and I was, I was married already, and talked to my wife, Esther, and I said, what should I do next? because I want to learn more. This has been a great experience. She said, I don't know, because my wife graduated from high school when she was 29. Huh. So I wrote to one of my correspondent school professors, a guy in Colorado who's retired, and I said, what do I do next? And he wrote back to me and he said, I think you should get your PhD. And now that was crazy, PhD. So I wrote back to him and said, where should I do it? And he wrote back and he said, you should do it at Harvard University. That filled me with confidence that I'd never had in my life. That filled me with a sense of, of possibility that somebody had that kind of belief that I could do it. So you know what I did? I wrote a, an application to Harvard University to do my PhD. And I did it with, with a sense of love and affection. And I wrote my essays and I sent in my transcripts and I got rejected in one week. <laughs> it was just one word, no. Turns out that a 30 year old college dropout uh, French horn player is not Harvard's core demographic. <clears throat> and I didn't know what to do. And so I said to my wife, I'm going to call him up and see how close I came. And my wife said, You're an idiot. <laughs> but I did it. I called him up, and because I needed, no, I needed more information, I got this nice lady in the admissions office, and I said, I just got rejected from your from your PhD program in economics, she said, I'm sorry. And I said, no, no, it's fine. I just need to know how close did I come? She puts down the phone and, and I can hear rustling of papers and, and, and cabinets closing and opening and, and she comes back two minutes later. She says, um, not close. <clears throat> and now I'm in a panic, I'm bargaining. I'm like, was I in the top half? And she says, no, and it was terrible. So I made a plan to try someplace else, and I got rejected, and I tried someplace else, and I got rejected, and I finally found a graduate school that wasn't paying close attention, and I got in. And I never told anybody. 
And through grad, under, in my graduate school experience, people would say, where'd you do your undergraduate? And I wish I could have said Jacksonville University. <laughs> Instead, I said, ha, 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 university. <laughs> and then I finished my doctorate, and I went and, and, and I took a teaching job. And then I, I, I traded up to a better university. And I was at Syracuse, which in public policy is a very good school. And all of my friends, all of my colleagues, they went to Harvard. And they would ask me, and I would never, I would change the subject. I didn't lie. It was on my CV, <laughs> and it sounds legit, and nobody ever checked. And I kept it a secret. I was mortified. I was embarrassed by that. I know I shouldn't have been. And then in 2008, my life changed because I went to the Washington, D.C. to be the president of this think tank that I run now, the American Enterprise Institute, which is an academic think tank. It's full of professors. It's full of Harvard men and women. And I was embarrassed. You know what I was afraid of? That the Washington Post was going to figure out that I was a fraud and a patsy and a loser. And they were going to write a big expose and it was going to be embarrassing. And so I kept it a secret. Here's what happened. I hired a guy to go do research for us on higher education. And higher education is in a big crisis today. I don't have to tell you. You're so lucky to be at this university where you don't have to spend a, b a billion dollars to get your college degree. I know it's expensive, but it's not as expensive. <laughs> where you don't have to worry, more fewer people are in debt, and they, they welcome all different points of view. Look, college in general in America is in a big crisis. So I hired this guy. This guy was great. He got his PhD at Berkeley. <laughs> he went to Dartmouth. He was a an elite guy, and I said, I want you to write an expose about higher ed. And he said, great. I said, what are you going to write it on? He said, I've always wanted to write an expose on fly-by-night correspondent schools. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking the jig is up. But I don't say anything. I'm being cool because maybe nothing happens. And a month later, he writes an email to me at night. He says, hey, Arthur. I'm on the Wikipedia site for something called Thomas Edison State College, and they're claiming you're an alum. So you better get that cleared up, dude. <clears throat> <laughs> and I figured, had to figure out what to do. So I wrote a, an article about it for the New York Times. I mean, I figured, go big or go home. And I called it my cheap, valuable college degree. And in that article, I mentioned that I got my entire college degree, including the books, for $10,000 in today's dollars. And it included a sticker for my car, which I didn't put on my car because I was embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, if it hadn't been for that degree, I would not have gone to college. And I wouldn't have gone to graduate school. And I wouldn't have had the life that I have. And I'm so grateful for it because that's what we need more of in America. We need more opportunity in this country for people at the margins of society. And, and, I, and I braced myself for people to say, aha, loser. And that's not what I heard. I started getting email from people who said, I went there too, thank you for writing that. And, and one lady wrote me an email saying, my son is 31 and, and 10 years ago he, he dropped out of college and he's really struggling. And I showed him your article and, and I think he's gonna sign up. And thank you for giving my son a second chance. And here's what I learned. Look, I've dedicated my life to equal opportunity. I believe in the radical equality of human dignity. And I believe that each one of us should serve people at the periphery of our society. We should look for people at the margins and find a way to lift them up. That is my belief. But there was one thing that truly connects me to people at the margins of society, and I spent 20 years running away from it. That's terrible. <laughs> that is practically unforgivable. And today, I would probably still be hiding it were not the fact that one of my own scholars at my institution outed me. That's not courage. That's cowardice. Don't be me. <laughs> there is something that you have that will remind you of that. Something that embarrasses you, something that connects you to other people who have a weakness. You need to lift them up. As leaders, they can relate to you if they know what your weakness is as well. I didn't finish the story. One of the people who called me after that article came out was the president of Thomas Edison State College. He asked me if I would give the commencement address at Thomas Edison. And when I was there, it was a group just like you, except older. We were at the Trenton Ice Arena. And there were 700 people crossing the stage. And their families were cheering at this arena. And every single one of them was the first generation to go to college. By the way, how many of you are the first generation in your family to go to college? Congratulations to you.
And they got, as they were, and Thomas Edison, as they were crossing the stage, each one of them got to do one thing, say their name and one short thing and then off because it didn't want it to take all day. And there's one lady that I remember, I was sitting up sort of where I'm sitting here, I was wearing this very robe. And this one lady, she stops and she says her name. And then she says, for this moment, I wanna thank my five children and the living God. And I thought, that's my hero. That's a startup life. That's a person who had weakness and turned it into strength. And that's somebody I wanna be able to connect to for the rest of my life. My friends, your assignment as you leave today, a graduate of this great university, is to ask yourself two questions. Number one, is my heart open to risk? Am I ready to be a life entrepreneur? Second, what's my weakness? What have I been hiding and running away from? How can I use it to connect to others, to help them, and to help make me a full and happy person? Take your education, answer the questions to these, answer answer these questions and let me tell you you'll be happy and nothing can stop you good luck god bless you and congratulations Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Arthur Brooks. Now, in addition to all of his other degrees, a degree holder from Jacksonville University. Very pleased. Um, I'm pleased now to introduce Dr. Christy Gover, your Dean of Students. Many of you know her as sort of the Chief Culture Officer of the University, and she's going to bring forward some student recognitions. Please welcome the Dean of Students, Dr. Christy Gover. Thank you, President Cost. This is one of our most esteemed commencement traditions. We will now recognize those graduating seniors selected as student of the year. These individuals have excelled academically and distinguished themselves as leaders within their college, school, or institute. Please join me in honoring these bright and accomplished men and women. Students, please stand briefly to be recognized as your name is called. In the College of Arts and Sciences, the Division of Humanities Student of the Year is Ashlyn Sparks. <laughs> Division of Social Sciences Students of the Year are Mackenzie Cass Bolin and Anthony Lewin Pardella. <laughs> Division of Science and Mathematics Students of the Year are Nolan Aaron Carney and Misha May Chalkley. <laughs> School of Education Student of the Year is Rebecca Ann Shickley. <laughs> the Davis College of Business Student of the Year is Maria Juliana Fueo. <laughs> the College of Fine Arts Student of the Year is Mamie Lou Catalina Pelez Small. In the Brooks Rehabilitation College of Healthcare Sciences for the Kegwin School of Nursing, the 2018 recipient of the Richard H. Malone Award as Student of the Year is Julie Lauren Kimbrough. And for the Department of Kinesiology, the Student of the Year is Emily K. Barton. Congratulations to each of you. Your dedication and achievements inspire us all. Please note that several other highly accomplished students graduating today were formerly recognized by their respective divisions and departments in separate awards ceremonies, and their names are listed in your program on pages six and seven. At this time, we are excited to recognize some extraordinary graduates receiving our most prestigious university awards. The President's Award for Outstanding Leadership, the University Award for Outstanding Service and Co-Curricular Involvement, and the Fred B. Noble Gold Medal for Scholarship. When each, each recipient is announced, we ask that you stand and be recognized. And at the conclusion of today's ceremony, we invite the recipients of these distinguished awards to join President Cost at the podium to take a commemorative photo. 
The President's Award for Outstanding Leadership is presented annually in recognition of student leadership, character, academic performance, and service. Our 2018 recipient is receiving her Bachelor of Science and Communication Sciences and Disorders and has achieved both the President's and Dean's List recognition multiple times for her academic achievements. Please join me in congratulating a young woman of exemplary character who has co contributed to many student organizations and university departments with her leadership and is a future graduate of the Speech Pathology Program, Bailey Flynn. Congratulations, Bailey. The University Award for Outstanding Service and Co-Curricular Involvement is given annually to a graduating senior whose service and participation at the university has been of the highest order. Today, graduating with a Bachelor of Science in English, we congratulate our resident expert on all things student life, aquatic, admissions, panhellenic, and fanatics, Ms. Ashlyn Sparks. Yeah. Congratulations, Ashlyn. Finally, we recognize true academic excellence in memory of the late Fred B. Noble, one of the founders of Jacksonville University and a true lifelong learner. He walked in this very ceremony earning his bachelor's degree from JU at age 84 and his Master of Arts in Teaching in 1974 at the age of 91. The Fred B. Noble Gold Medal for Scholarship, first awarded in 1957, goes to the students who have earned the highest GPA in their graduating class. This year we honor four seniors, all graduating summa cum laude, each with a 4.0 grade point average, a remarkable achievement. Again, please stand to be recognized, our 2018 gold medal honorees. Nolan Aaron Carney. <laughs> Daniel B. Farrell. Mamie Lou Catalina Pelez Small. And Ian Andrew Vargas. Congratulations to all of today's honorees. You truly personify the best attributes of Jacksonville University. At this time, please welcome my esteemed colleague, Provost and Senior Vice President for University and Academic Affairs, Dr. Donnie Horner, to recognize our faculty. Dr. Horner. Thank you, Dr. Gover. Will members of the faculty please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, there they are, the best faculty in America. Class of 2018, stand up, turn around, and show your faculty members how much you love them. Give it up for your faculty. Thank you, please be seated. Each year, a member of the Jacksonville University faculty who embodies the ideals of this university as a stellar teacher and scholar is selected by her peers. This faculty member is given the honorary title Professor of the Year. The faculty member chosen to receive Professor of the Year for the 2018-2019 academic year, she goes beyond her classroom endeavors and serves as the chair in the Department of English. An accomplished academician, she has been published multiple times, regularly making research presentations at regional and national conferences. Her greatest joy lies in helping our students achieve their potential. She's accessible to her students. She puts them first. She's a fixture on campus. This hardworking and humble individual has made two unique contributions to the university the founding of the Certificate in Editing Program, and the Women's and Gender Studies minor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to join me and join you in congratulating and recognizing our Jeopardy! champion, our Professor of the Year, ladies and gentlemen, who is Dr. Julie Brannon? Congratulations, Dr. Brand. Thank you, Dr. Horner. Thank you, Dr. Gover. If it's agreeable to the gathered group here, it is time to confer degrees. Are we ready? Yeah. 
It is my pleasure to initiate the conferring of degrees to our bachelor's candidates and to our three dual degree candidates who are receiving both a bachelor's and a master's degree this morning. Would all degree candidates please stand. Dr. Horner, will you join me, please? Are you ready? Mr. President, it's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of the university faculties to certify that these bachelor's degree candidates and dual degree candidates have met or are scheduled to meet all requirements for their respective degrees and to present them to you for the conferring of their degrees. Thank you. By the authority granted to Jacksonville University by virtue of its charter and articles of incorporation according to the laws of the state of Florida, I've received the recommendations of your faculty who in solemn session have declared each one of you worthy of your respective degrees and have recommended to me the granting of such degrees. So by virtue of my authority, delegated to me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon each one of you the bachelor's degree or the dual master's degree from Jacksonville University with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Jacksonville University, class of 2018, it is time to turn your tassels to the left and allow me along with others to say congratulations, you are a graduate of this university. And you may be seated, please. With the marshals now escort our graduates by rows to the platform. Continuing along JU tradition, we invite all family members to also stand as their graduate is announced. I also invite each respective college dean to assist in congratulating these students. Thank you, Luke. It is my pleasure to present the College of Arts and Sciences bachelor's graduates. Victoria Louise Culverhouse. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Shickley. Benedito Marlin Agostino. Sope Akinjo. James M. Anal. Rachel Carol Aus. Taylor Elizabeth Bailey. Kachita Renal Barber. Nuar Bashiti. Alfred G. Battle III. <laughs> Aubrey Benjamin. Marissa Ann Biggie. Jenna Dawn Blyer, cum laude University Honors. Andrew Lawrence Bodkin. Brittany Alyssa Bogus. Mackenzie Cass Bolin, summa cum laude, University Honors, Phi Kappa Phi. Sene Bochnik. Jake Anthony Brito. Brandy Nicole Bui. Brian Keith Burnett Jr. Natalie Brooke Butler. Danielle Lynn Buttermore. Jasmine Janine Bayard. Yeah. 
Jacob Major Capistron. Nolan Aaron Carney, summa cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Misha May Chalkley, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Mathematics, Phi Kappa Phi. Antoine Therese Clayton. Carla Horn Colbert. Maria Nicole Cooler, cum laude. Vanessa Marie Cordova, magna cum laude. Nathan M. Dalton. Joshua Davis, magna cum laude. Keisha Rashawn Davis. Joshua Allen Derbabian. Oquame Precious Fanier, magna cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Archie S. Faust. Andrew Fay. Emil Flores. Bridget Leanne Francis. Alexandria A. Gagne. Amber Nicole Garzon. Samuel Robert Gaskin, summa cum laude. Jennifer Ann Giroux. Antoine Maurice Goggins. Amber Nicole Goldberg. Sierra Marin Gernoski. Brooke Kylie Grant. Catherine Ann Gronis, magna cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Haley Marie Grossman. Devin Lamont Harris. Alicia L. Hart. Tyler Michael Havener. Nicole Marie Hethington. Blake Anthony Hibden. Brooke E. Hicks. Victor Trenton Hicks. Justin T. Hiller, cum laude. Ashton Heeren, cum laude. Triet Min Huang. Mitchell William Squire Hopkins. Jean Allison Hoagland, magna cum laude. Widmire Jean. Ashley Marie Johnson.
Callie Alexandra Johnson. <laughs> Jeffrey Tyler Jones. Callan Jane Kelly. Robert Douglas Keem, summa cum laude. India M. LaHayes, cum laude, University Honors. Derek J. Langford. Jorge Antonio Leon, cum laude. Zing Yi Leong, summa cum laude, University Honors, Phi Kappa Phi. Christopher Earl Lowry. Christopher James Lyles. Shannon Nicole Lynch. Amanda Louise Mason. Alyssa G. McCaskey. Allison Nicole McCourt. McAllen Marie McDonough. Claire McLenna. Daryl Ove Mo Charles. Kelly S. Mirza. Matthew Ryan Meyer. Shelby Lynn Mickler, summa cum laude, University Honors. Courtney Pearl Miller. Weston Gary Miller. Stephanie Landetta Gutierrez, cum laude. Zane A. Miller. Jake Andrew Morris, magna cum laude. Shauna Nicole Newman, magna cum laude, University Honors. Christopher Michael Nichols. Jade Marie Nimmo. Olga Nashtayev. Folashade Anakoye. Aaron Jacob Paff. Cassidy Rose Pinto. Courtney Annabeth Pippen, cum laude. Logan Michael Pritchard. Alexandria Nicole Pulliam, magna cum laude. Madison Catherine Reagan. Shanique Aisha Ramaliz, cum laude. Pascal Yves Rathley. Marshall Clayton Rawson. Oksana Ivana Rezvina. Willard L. Richards, Jr. Jackson Robert Ritterhoff. Heather Ann Roberts, magna cum laude. 
Ryan C. Robotham. <laughs> Melissa Lynn Rogers, magna cum laude. Christina Lauren Rolden, cum laude. Jennifer Rose Ryan. Facinia D. Santiago. Tabitha Riley Schaefer. Brianna K. Schenecker. Chelsea J. Schofield. John Madison Shelley, Jr. Everett Davis Shelley. Kyla Sue Ann Seaman, summa cum laude. Adriana Lenise Simmons. Gerald Parker Cliff Savy. Lacey Danielle Smith. Zachary Thomas Smith. Amber Simone Soto. Ashlyn Sparks, magna cum laude, University Honors, Phi Kappa Phi. Joan Marie Caserta Spinelli, cum laude. Nicole Aaron Stackhouse, cum laude. Roy Loring Leffler Starr. Veronica Stasatita. Chelsea L. Stratton. Robert Hunter Strobel. Victor M. Subek. Mackenzie Ann Swan, cum laude. Hannah Noel Thompson, cum laude. Olivia Ann Talotson, magna cum laude. Tanisha S. Tolan, cum laude. Gabrielle Ann Torres. Camden Alice Trainer. Samuel H. Trotter. Maria Paloma Vargas. Madison Elizabeth Vestal. Stephen James Viar, magna cum laude. Kelsey Elizabeth Wack, cum laude, University Honors. Katrina Elizabeth Waldrop, magna cum laude, University Honors. Lyndon Augustus Waite. Yichan Wan. Robbie Warda, magna cum laude. Laura Elaine Wardrop, cum laude, University Honors. Frederick Russell Washburn. Sarah Ann Wicks. Chase William York. Andrew Scott Zavitt. Justin Toshinobu Zawas. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments.
It is my pleasure to present the Davis College of Business Bachelor's Graduates. Jared Thomas Walsh. Abdul Rahman Ahmed Al Gaharbi. Zachary Alagood, Magna Cum Laude. Jessica Lauren Armstrong. Andrew Grant Ayer. Ryan C. Bevel. Fred Anthony Blaz Jr., Magna Cum Laude. Kathleen Isabella Bolt. Benjamin Matthew Buttendorf, Magna Cum Laude. Jessica Lynn Carlson. Gabriel Orlando Castro. McLenn Chicken. Justin Thomas Chittum, cum laude. Blake C. Christensen. Andrew Willem Sosia. Maxwell Philip D'Amato. Amanda Maria Detmer. Willis Frank Dowd V. Nicholas Ford Dutch. Alexander Rene Dupree. Shelby Joy Durden, cum laude. William Alexander Etheridge. Sean Robert Ewart. Michael D. Isle. Ferris Yusuf Fadil Sr. Andrea Foski. Andrew Michael Gale. Mitchell T. Gallo, magna cum laude. Griffin Garland, cum laude. Frederick Gibbs. Benjamin Allen Gleichenhaus. Doran Richard Graham. Francis Spencer Grant. Henderson Bernard Gray II. Mackenzie Lynn Grohr, cum laude. Connor Mark Haas, cum laude. Bradford L. Hall, Jr. Maxwell Brian Hartong, cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Jace Hogan. Corey Alexander Joe. Joshua D. Johnson. Willie Edward Johnson. Christopher John Jones. Nalini Natalia Jones, cum laude. Daniel Edward Corbush. Sure. 
Anita Natividad Callas. Morgan Kate Lambert. Irvin Giovanni Lemus Jr. Jacob Thomas Levy. Chase McIntyre. Robert J. McKinney. Amanda N. Morales. Christina Paula Nagel. Marquita Latonya Nash, magna cum laude. Jaron Douglas Neat Washington, Douglas. Ryan Harry Knowles. Malin Heather O'Connor. James William Oltorek. Jonathan Edward Palisok. Mitchell James Parker, cum laude. James Michael Powelzik, magna cum laude. Chris D. Pelham. Raul Pereira de la Huerta. <laughs> Stephen Charles Price, magna cum laude. Eric Richard Ramsauer. Harrison Dominic Rodormer. Lacaris Renee Salter. Jessica Schwartz. Colton Tyler Sedlak. Gregory F. Shanahan. Santiago Solano. Walker Thomas Spradley. Spencer Ryan Stockton, cum laude. Eric Strong. Aaliyah. Aaliyah K. Sullivan. Andre L. Sullivan. Robert Clyde Turhune IV, cum laude. Paige Nicole Warnock. Kate M. Weber. Ryan Douglas Wells. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments. It is my pleasure to present the College of Fine Arts bachelor's graduates. Jamil Abdul Raham. Charlotte Alicia Adams, summa cum laude, University Honors. Melinda Asi, cum laude. Brooke Alexandra Austin, summa cum laude. Zina Yanine Bennett, cum laude. Jessica Lee Cartwright. Danny Samir Shalhoub. Sawyer Ross Chubin. Shade Ray Crosby, magna cum laude. 
Skylar Day Dyack season. Natasha Carlana Ebert. Savannah Morgan Elam, cum laude. Forrest Samuel Elledge, cum laude. Cassandra Nicole Elmore. Daniel B. Farrell, summa cum laude, Departmental Honors in Music. Alana Morgan Fotley, summa cum laude. Rena Milana Harper, summa cum laude, University Honors. Heidi J. Herman. Paul Francois Jackson. Aaron Lee Jennings, cum laude. Shannon Marie Kempinski. Atanas Kosev. Edward Murky Latimer. Carly Elizabeth Levy. Bethany Lynn Launce. Carolina Elizabeth Melota, magna cum laude. Taylor Nicole Manso. Alina M. Martinez. Savannah Lee McFarland, cum laude. Duan Trevin Mills. Shelby Elizabeth Mosley. Robert James Nobles. Daniel Ortega. Catherine Francis Petrie, magna cum laude. Daniel Joseph Powell Jr., magna cum laude. Jessica Roberts. Ro Richard Henry Dewell Roberts. Brandon D. Ruiz. Sarah Simonska. Mamie Lou Catalina Pelez Small, summa cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Melanie Nicole Valero, magna cum laude. Ian Andrew Vargas, summa cum laude, University Honors, Phi Kappa Phi. Devin Alexis Variano, magna cum laude. Cassius McClay Wallace. Victoria Dawn West. Emily Nicole Weichel. Lillian Michaela Wright, summa cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments. It is my pleasure to present the Brooks Rehabilitation College of Healthcare Sciences bachelor's graduates. Sulai Abernathy. Nana Afu Akwa. Elizabeth Jean Adams. Jamal Armand Ajama. Jacqueline C. Ajero. Timothy William Altizer. Corey R. Anglin.
Emily Ann Archer. Nicole Kathleen Atkinson. Brianna Audette. Danielle Aaron Augustiniak. Kaylee Lucille Esther Avery. Shelby T. Bobowitz, cum laude. Danielle Jean Baker, cum laude. Heather Ashley Baptiste. Nikita Amisha Dina Boyd. David James Boyle, cum laude. Ilana Brashkova, cum laude. Jacqueline Bruno, magna cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Adrian N. Bignard Falquist, cum laude. Angel Luis Camancho III, magna cum laude. Maria Fernanda Carrias. Anastasia Katrina Carr. Deandra Raquel Carter. Carly Michelle Cates. Summer Lynn Chatelain. Eileen A. Clark. Christy Woods Claxton. Sheila Darlene Cobb. Walter Lawrence Colvin Jr. Tiffany Jocelyn Connors. April M. Cooley. Courtney Page Curtis. Kimberly A. Damron. Jordan M. Daniels. Megan R. Davis, cum laude. Chloe Danielle DeGrasse, cum laude, University Honors. Deborah M. Cullen, cum laude. Joelle Dontremont, magna cum laude. Savannah Rose Diston. Aaron N. Farrell. Christina Maureen Finnan, magna cum laude, University Honors. Daniel Alberto Montilla. Bailey P. Flynn, cum laude. Alicia Foster. Kathleen Francois. Kenneth Sean Oliver. Jennifer Astri Geraldo, cum laude. Corey Lee Goldsboro, magnum cum laude. Anna Maria Gomez. Kayla Tanise Gordon. Rebecca Lynn Gray. Aaron Kate Gresham, cum laude. Davis Brent Hart. April Lynn Hauser. 
Shannon M. Hine, cum laude. Corey Michael Helgeland, magna cum laude. Cambria Debony Hernandez. Daniel Sean Hill, magna cum laude. Michaela Liana Hill. Kelsey Elizabeth Hoffman. Kimberly Inge. Amber Lee Ingham. Last name Jaggernoff. Natalie Nina Jaggernoff. Agnes Renee Jakes, magna cum laude. Caroline Elizabeth Jimenez, cum laude. Benji Jose. Sean Paul Karp, cum laude. <laughs> Tiffany Jade Kempel. Julia L. Kimbrough, magna cum laude, Phi Kappa Phi. Catherine Elizabeth Cole. Last name Camille Nicole Larrabee. Jordan Leanne Lorimore. Last name Leia. Angela Monique Leia. Last name Leroy. Sherry Kendrick Leroy, magna cum laude. Lacey Elizabeth Long, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Nursing. Brianne Denise Lavorne. Courtney Lynn Lowe, magna cum laude. Matthew Stephen Linden, Leiden. Ariel Solomon Mandelbloom. Kendra Fabian Marion. Shara Nanisha McPhail. June V. Marrero. Ebony L. Merriweather Bryant. Jessica Renee McCoy. Karen Arlene McKenzie. Elizabeth Marie Miller, cum laude, University Honors, Departmental Honors in Nursing. Courtney Lee Minnick, magna cum laude, Departmental Honors in Nursing. Wyatt Mitchum, cum laude, University Honors. Janelle Ruth Montgomery, magna cum laude. Tashana Lakia Moorman. Aijiro Agena Maybure. Taylor Alyssa Mulligan, cum laude. Michelle Murdoch. Jade Leanne Nelson Donegal. Carolyn Grace Nemechek, magna cum laude, University Honors. Shakela Lavette Nevitt. <laughs> Stacy Lynn Newsom. Joshua Charles Nichols. Janu Udong Naring. Jessica N. Parrish. Tristan Abigail Prospero. Pernell Orlando Rattray Jr. Alexandria Ray Rosselli.
Olivia Rossman. Christopher Rowland. Fetsaman Sakanofet. Lynette Sinetson. Jerry Ryan Sefestein. Brian Ellis Shamaski, cum laude, Departmental Honors in Nursing. Jessica Brooke Shipkowski, cum laude. Anastasia Price, cum laude. Bonita Pertis Sims. Adam Andrew Stenson, cum laude. Carson Alexander Steffens. Sherry Lynn Sturrott. Nicole Francis Story. Latasha L. Thompson. <laughs> William Christian Torado III, cum laude. <laughs> Kevin M. Turner, cum laude. <laughs> Ursula D. Urbas. Jeffrey J. Vargas. Savannah Catherine Vereen, magna cum laude. Esther Monique Walker. Kelsey Leanne Watts. Catherine Ann Williamson. Sarah Marie Witt. Kimberly C. Wooden. Jill Zimmerman. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments. This completes the awarding of all bachelor's degrees. Thank you. Now we invite back up three dual degree candidates for hooding to receive their master's degree. Dr. Horner, our provost, would you please join me here at the podium for the hooding ceremony? It is now my pleasure to present the dual degree College of Arts and Sciences master's graduates. Victoria Louise Culverhouse. Rebecca Ann Shickley. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments. It is now my pleasure to present the dual degree Brooks Rehabilitation College of Healthcare Sciences master's graduate. Ebony L. Merriweather Bryant. Please join me in celebrating their accomplishments. This completes the awarding of all master's degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2018 of Jacksonville University. Congratulations, welcome. One of our Jacksonville University commencement traditions 
is to honor the graduates who will, later today, also be commissioned as officers in the United States Navy and in the United States Marine Corps. The Naval Reserve Officer, Officer Training Corps is a long-standing program here at this university, one that we're quite proud of. Since 1971, we forged a strong bond between this university and Jacksonville's military community, making our unit one of the finest in the nation. We're also proud to note that since our inception, dating back to 1971, this unit has provided more than 1,700 outstanding, superb ensigns and second lieutenants for duty as officers in the U.S. military. Now, having already been bestowed their bachelor's degree earlier, we're pleased to now recognize their pending commission. Doing the honors this morning is a special friend, Captain Glenn S. Leverett, commanding officer of our unit here, and a Naval Surface Warfare Officer with numerous command tours to his name. He led in combat as a riverine while deployed in Iraq. He led a multi-billion dollar global enterprise for logistics while stationed in the Middle East. He recently completed a tour as Deputy Commander of U.S. Naval Forces, Korea. And I'm proud to say that Captain Leverett is one of our own, JU Class of 1996. Please join me in welcoming forward Commanding Officer Captain Glenn Leverett to provide the officer candidates. Present the candidates. <laughs> Hand salute. Ready to. As a commanding officer of Jacksonville University Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps Unit, it is my honor to present these officers. Later this afternoon, they will take the oath of office and swear their allegiance to our nation and to our Constitution. At that time, they will be presented their commission from the President of the United States, as commission officers have been presented since 1775. Their commission reads as follows. From the President of the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents greeting, know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of so named officers, I do appoint them as an ensign in the United States Navy to rank as such from the 20th day of April, 2018. These officers will therefore carefully and diligently discharge the duties of the office to which appointed by doing and performing all manners of things thereunto belonging. And I do strictly charge and require those officers and other personnel of lesser rank to render such obedience as is due an officer of this grade and position. And these officers to observe and follow such orders and direction from time to time as may be given by the President of the United States of America or other superior officers acting in accordance with the laws of the United States of America. This commission is to continue in force during the pleasure of the President of the United States of America under the provisions of those public laws relating to officers of the armed forces of the United States of America and the component thereof in which this appointment is made. Done at the city of Washington this 28th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2018, and of the independence of the United States of America, 242nd by Donald J. Trump. Hand salute. Ready to about face. Congratulations and Godspeed. Post. Forward march.
Thank you, Captain Leverett, and warmest congratulations to those outstanding NROTC graduates, one of whom you're going to see up here in just another moment. We'd like to thank all the past and future service members to this university as they've served our nation. We'd also like to recognize Jacksonville University's extended military family, including these fine graduates, along with 48 active duty U.S. military and reservists, 279 veterans, and 114 military dependents and spouses enrolled at our university right now. They represent the embodiment of Jacksonville University's commitment to excellence and service. So if we could, I now ask anyone in the audience today who has ever served in any branch of the United States military to please stand and let us recognize you. Thank you so much for your service to our country and your sacrifices for our freedom that we enjoy today. It's now my privilege to introduce our alumni speaker who's going to welcome the class of 2018. Matt Dobbins is a double dolphin who bleeds the green and white and gold here. He was an outstanding student athlete during his time, a captain on the baseball team, later an All-American pitcher here. He received his bachelor's degree on this stage in 2008 and his, and his MBA in 2010. He now leads what's called the Gold Fin Society for graduates of the last decade. And he's also volunteering for the Jacksonville Sports Council, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and the JU Alumni Board of Governors. He's a rising star in the financial services IT space with Apex Systems. So please join me in welcoming one of your own to welcome you, Mr. Matt Dobbins. Thank you, Mr. President. We are family, maybe not by blood. I may not know you and you may not know me, but we're family. We're family because we all graduated from Jacksonville University. <laughs> Class of 2018, on behalf of JU alumni everywhere, congratulations and welcome to the family. <laughs> 10 years ago, I sat underneath these same oak trees and wonder some of the same things you might be wondering about today. Who would I turn out to be? What will I do with my life? Why is it so hot? <laughs> Am I sweating through my thing here? I was nervous and optimistic at the same time. I had a sweet flip phone in my pocket, and I was still on the family plan. I felt like I could conquer the world. And even though I said farewell to campus life over a decade ago, the JU family, our JU family, keeps turning up in my life. Today, I have two quick stories to tell you about the way JU has changed my perspective on the world. Story number one, it was my first week of freshman year. It happened just off to your left here at the Howard Administration Building. I don't remember why I was walking out of Howard, but I do remember the two cute girls who were walking about just at the same time. Being the gentleman my mother raised me to be, I rushed ahead to open the door for them. I put my hand on the door handle, smiled at the ladies, and I pulled. And then I pulled again. My face turned red. I was so embarrassed. And then one of the girls said something to me that I'll never, ever forget. Come on, freshman. You just have to push. And then she walked right past me into the building. Hashtag embarrassing. What did I learn? Our JU family, in a moment of sheer humility, had taught me something really important. If at first you don't succeed, definitely try again. But perhaps try with a new solution. Try with a different approach. Be creative. The world we live in today has some massive issues. Sustainability, data privacy, global trade, education. It will be up to you and to me to solve some of these issues, to innovate, to collaborate, and figure them out together. So if you're working on something and pulling really hard in one direction, remember, sometimes you just have to push. Story number two. I was backpacking through Europe with a couple of my buddies who also graduated from JU. Naturally, we were in Dublin, Ireland at the Guinness factory. After a few tastings, we were walking out 
when out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of the green and gold shirt. I thought, no way. What are the chances? I darted towards it and I just yelled out, J.U. I don't know why I yelled that, but it worked. And a, me a member of the men's J.U. tennis team turned around. I was so excited, I went straight in for the hug. I don't know why, I and I would just say, I know I've been talking a lot about family here. I'm just saying, read the situation. I mean, I was cool with it, but he was a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm just saying, you know, don't make it weird. <laughs> Through this experience, I realized that we truly have a global network of JU alumni all over the world. Since then, I've met up with alumni in London, Amsterdam, Croatia, and countless other cities in the United States. Technology makes it so easy for us to keep in touch. And it's up to you and to me to stay connected. Use the network you've gained from your time here at JU. Use it to your advantage. Use it to get a job. Use it to gain a mentor. Use it to be a mentor. Use it to get involved in your community. Use it to meet your wife. That's what I did. I listened to your speech. Lesson number one, right? Check. Use this talented network that you've gained, this family that you've gained, to propel yourself and others forward. Class of 2018, I will conclude with this. 10 years ago, I sat underneath these oak trees with a flip phone in my pocket, and I was ready to take on the world. Today, I stand before you with an iPhone in my pocket. I upgraded. And I'm still on the family plan. It's the JU family plan. And I'm looking forward to taking on the world with each and every one of you. Congratulations, class of 2018. Go get them. Thank you very much, Matt. It's one additional tradition we'd like to note today here at the university for the senior class to give back to the university. And we're very grateful for that. Acknowledging that investment today from the class of 2018 is Misha Chalkley. She's the immediate past president of our university's Green Key Honor Leadership Society. She's one of our JU Students of the Year. And she's worth noting, please, the first female Jacksonville University NROTC midshipman to ever earn an elite submarine warfare officer assignment through this highly selective <laughs> nuclear submarine program. Ladies and gentlemen, Misha Chalkley. Thank you, President Cost. Green Key, JU's oldest active student organization, was established in 1949 as an honorary leadership society, and its members founded the JU Alumni Association. In this spirit, Green Key is also the organization that historically sponsors the senior class gift each year. If you will take a moment and cast your mind back to October of 2016 and the city of Jacksonville in the wake of Hurricane Matthew. That year, JU students responded to the needs of their fellow dolphins in unprecedented ways, including the creation of the Nelly Student Support Fund. The fund is designed to address urgent student needs, whether that's an unexpected medical expense, death of a family member, a housing need, or any situation that causes a student to exhaust all other resources and seek help. This year, for the first time in JU commencement tradition, each graduating student who personally invested back into this university, whether through the Nelly Fund, the JU Scholarship Fund, the annual diaper dash, and other designated gifts, is wearing a tricolor cord representing their philanthropy. Most importantly, these cords represent our commitment to making a difference on this campus, both now and in the future. These investments are all about dolphins helping dolphins, and this is truly a gift from the entire class of 2018. On behalf of Green Key, I would like to say congratulations again to the class of 2018 and wish you all the best for the future. Thank you, Misha. It says a great deal about this class and their families that their decision was to invest in future students. We're deeply grateful to all of you. Graduates, it is time for us to conclude today's ceremony. 
We in <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, we'd like to invite all the graduates and their families and their friends to please stay. This campus is yours. So please come up here and have pictures taken. Go on to the statues. We're very pleased to have you here. And at this time, to sing our alma mater, please welcome back the terrific group, the River Tones. You can find the lyrics on page three in your program. We invite you all to please stand and to remain standing for the benediction following our alma mater. Here are the River Tones. Now we welcome back Audrey Moran to conclude our ceremony by offering the benediction. Audrey? Friends, as we go forth from this celebration, may the joy and hope we feel today serve and guide you as you follow your dreams and find your place in the world. May you remember the power of positive intention and action and the value of our human spirit in a world full of opportunity. May you use your gifts and talents to make meaningful relationships, build communities, and spread compassion. And may you always come safely home to your JU family with pride and peace in your hearts. Amen. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Audrey. To all our graduates, ascend to your rightful place as graduates of this great university. Aspire to be great. Achieve your potential. Ladies and gentlemen, a good morning to you all. We are concluded. Congratulations. <laughs>